Hey, what's going on guys? Raj here. I hope you guys are doing well today. I am back with a video in my fragrance articles slash features series. So if you don't know what this series is about, this is basically where I share with you guys some fragrance related articles or features that I've come across in magazines and newspapers and um, yeah, just talk the, uh, just show them to you guys. So I've got three here. Uh, all the details are down below in the description box, so check that out. Um, if you want more details. So the first one is the article, uh, it's a very very small feature to be honest, it's called Dark Attraction and it's uh, about Versace's new fragrance Oud Noir. Just try and get a close up of the, uh, of the shot. So that's the bottle. It looks quite purple here, it's actually a black bottle. Uh, Dark Attraction and then a bit of a description here. And I'll read it out for you. It basically says, um, so yeah, enhance your seductive appeal with Versace's striking new fragrance. Oud Noir ticks all the boxes for men who love full-bodied, heady oriental scents. Earthy base notes of patchouli and leatherwood are heated through with spicy notes of saffron and cardamom. Top notes of neroli add a touch of freshness and vibrancy while black pepper finishes the fragrance with just the right amount of kick. Encased in faded black glass with gold accents, it's perfect for the elegant man with a strong personality. Uh, sounds like me, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so the price of this one, uh, expensive, £110 for 100 ml. So this came as quite a surprise for me that um, Versace, first of all, coming out with the Oud fragrance, and they've priced it at quite a high level. I think... Um, this is only exclusively available at Harrods. Harrods is a big department store here in London, a high-end luxury department store. And I know uh, a few of you guys on the on the forums um, on Facebook have tried this fragrance, and uh, not a great not great um, comments I've heard. But if you have tried this, let me know. Uh, what do you think about Versace making a oud fragrance? I'm definitely going to check it out. The notes sound quite interesting. Um, but the price might be a little bit off-putting for some. So that's just a quick thing there. Uh, next up is a fragrance talking about citrus, fresh fragrances coming into spring now. Uh, summer is hopefully a couple of months away. And so here we go. This is basically it. And that's the second page. So here they are saying, uh, the the article is called Citrus Fresh. Top note tangs of bergamot, lemon, grapefruit and blood orange add zest to these future classic scents. So I think all of these are actually new releases onto the market. And um, or some of them are rehashes of old fragrances. But I haven't actually tried all of them. But uh, I'm just going to show you what they're recommending for the upcoming warmer months. So first of up here, uh, this one is Versace Eros. Um, Mixed reception I've heard from this fragrance. Um, I do like the bottle and I definitely want to try it, but I haven't heard you know amazing comments about this fragrance. Number two is from Chanel. This is Chanel 1932. Um, this is uh, from their less exclusive line, which is a line which I'm just exploring slowly but surely. Um, I've got my nose on um, I think uh, Queer de Russie, uh, Coromandel. Um, Sycamore as well, and they're all good. Yeah, I like I like so so far. I've liked what I've what I've smelt. Uh, this one over here. This is Joe Malone's bitter orange and chocolate cologne. So that sounds interesting. You know, uh, orange and chocolate is not something that I like to eat. Uh, I'm a big chocolate fan, but whenever orange is introduced, I'm not too sure. But Joe Malone tend to do kind of quite fresh, uplifting, quite simple scents. So this one, you know, definitely worth checking out, I'd say. I'm definitely going to have a look at that when I can. Uh, number four, this one here, is from, uh, it's called Zen Sun for him, which is from Shiseido. So I think, from what I know, Shiseido um, are a makeup company and they own Serge Luton. Um, I don't really know anything about their fragrances. So if you have tried this and if you know any other fragrances from the line which are worth checking out, then let me know. Um, and then we've got here number five, which is CK um, CK One Summer. I'll be honest with you guys, 
I'm not really a massive fan of Calvin Klein fragrances. I don't have any, and that's for a reason. I don't really like any of them that I've tried. I mean, some of them are good, and, like, you know, you would smell good wearing them, but there's nothing really that stands out for me. But, you know, I'm going to give every fragrance a chance, and I'll definitely try and check this out when I can. Um, number six. This is from the house of Atelier Cologne. This is Mistral Patchouli. Uh, it's a Cologne Absolute. Um, yeah, actually, I, th I definitely think if you haven't tried anything from Atelier Cologne, definitely get your nose on a few of them because a lot of them actually offer quite good value. Um, they come in quite big sizes for decent prices and you can get some interesting fragrances from that house. So patchouli, presumably this is a, a more fresher take on patchouli. Um, that's what they're saying here and that's what I've heard as well. Um, going on to number number seven. Here's number seven. And this one is called number 34 Hommage or Hommage. And this is from the house of Diptyque. Um, slowly getting into the house of Diptyque. I've tried about maybe three or four of their fragrances. Um, I'm very keen on getting their latest one, Volute, in the EDP concentration. But I'll probably check this out when I'm uh, when I'm next in the store. And uh, number eight is another one from Joe Malone. Just there. And this one is Lemon Tart Cologne. So Lemon Tart, so that implies, well, it implies that it's actually a gourmand fragrance with the word tart in it. But it could have a sort of, um, well, the first thing that comes to mind is actually Allure Homme Edition Blanche from Chanel. If they're talking about Lemon Tart, well, you never know how it could be. Definitely worth checking out. Joe Malone are a good house for simple, um, fresh fragrances, nothing too extravagant. Um, number nine over here is a house that I've never heard of, or I don't think I've heard of them anyway. Uh, this is called uh, Blood Oranges Natural Spray Fragrance from Shea and Blue. Um, so yeah, probably, you know, presumably smells like blood oranges, if it's called Blood Orange Natural Spray. Um, yeah, that sounds quite interesting. I do like citrus fragrances, especially the more juicier style oranges. So um, I don't really know where this is available. They have a website, shayandblue.com. So presumably there. And uh, the final fragrance in this list, number 10, is um, 212 Men Limited Edition 2013 uh, from the house of Carolina Herrera. Um, I don't really know too much about uh, Carolina Herrera. Um, I know the original 212 gets a lot, gets a lot of um, uh, attention and it's actually a fragrance that I've been wanting to try for a long time. But um, sometimes, you know, you have, there's so many fragrances on the market uh, even very popular ones, which have been around for a while, but you just don't get around to trying them. So that's it. You know, some uh, some interesting fragrances maybe in there in the list. I haven't tried all of them. Um, but yeah, and all the details are down below. So check those out. OK, going on to the final. Um, this is more of an in-depth, more of an article, really. Um, I've got to apologize for the uh, appearance of this paper. It's, it's seen better days. It's seen better days. It's looking a bit tatty. But basically, this is all about fragrance terminology and scent terminology. And um, it breaks down the different terminologies and a little bit of description behind them. And uh, hopefully you might find this useful. So the first one they focus on is the aftershave. Or the aftershave splash, just there. Okay, so um, I think these uh, concentration terms are... Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure how accurate they are, but, but they're saying an aftershave is between 1% and 3% perfume oil. And they say aftershaves used to be the closest a certain generation of man ever got to wearing a fragrance. The high al alcohol content would disinfect skin after shaving, and the scent, being so faint, was something of an added bonus. As they're intended to sort out freshly shorn skin, they usually dispense straight out, out of the bottle. If you're looking to calm post-shave shave rash, redness, and other razor-related trauma, it's best to invest in a dedicated balm. Uh, but nowadays, all the big brands now scent their soothing balms uh, too, so you'll still get a whiff of your signature aroma. And here they've mentioned uh, Eau Sauvage aftershave lotion from Dior. The next um, category here is the Eau de Cologne. And the description here is a concentration of between 2 and 5% perfume oil. This is the stuff that usually comes in those gigantic 200 to 300 ml size bottles, and with good reason, as it's simply not going to last very long. 
Uh, that doesn't make a cologne any less of a fragrance, um, this guy says. Uh, it just means that the concentration is better suited to those hot months when you don't want to wear anything too heavy. Uh, this is why they are light, bright, summery scents, uh, made with citrus and herb notes and little in the way of a solid base. It says many US houses, and I think what he means here is actually US, well, people in the US, um, simply use the term cologne for marketing purposes. Uh, I mean, around the world, people would use the word cologne for marketing purposes or to refer to a fragrance when the liquid inside isn't actually an eau de toilette. Uh, but they say your nose should be able to differentiate between the two. The fragrance they've chosen to show here is actually um, a fragrance I wouldn't have shown. This is from uh, Penhaligon's. And this is Penhaligon's Eau de Cologne. Uh, so the next category is Eau de Toilette, just over here. And they've shown Bleu de Chanel. So concentration between 4 and 8% perfume oil. The most common concentration, you're more likely to own an EDT already. Uh, this fragrance strikes a happy medium between the fleetingness of a cologne and the full throttled strength of an eau de parfum, uh, which makes it suitable for any occasion, both day and night. Unlike an aftershave, it has too much perfume essence to be worn on the face. And the next bit is actually quite interesting. It says here, the term actually originates, so the term eau de toilette, actually originates from the French fa uh, phrase faire sa toilette, which literally translates as to get ready. Um, it says here, spritzing your scent was originally uh, the final touch in the French dandy's daily grooming ritual. And going on to the next one, this is, oh, is it? Uh, it's not really, uh, it's not really focusing, but this is, this is basically an eau de parfum, and they're saying that the concentration here is between 8 and 15% perfume oil. And the fragrance they've chosen to show here is Miller Harris's Terre de Bois. Okay, so concentration between 8 and 15% perfume oil. Uh, he says, uh, we won't lie to you. Eau de parfum concentrations, which can pack quite a punch, have tr traditionally been marketed towards women. Uh, however, they're now becoming increasingly popular for men especially when it comes to niche fragrances and extreme, intense or concentrate reformulations of bestsellers. And he says, you may well find an intense eau de toilette, which puts the strength somewhere between an EDT and an EDP. Uh, higher end brands whose customer base tends to be a little more serious about its scent will usually opt for these due to greater longevity. That's not always the case. Sometimes you will come across EDP fragrances which actually don't last that very that long on your skin. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, I guess that's an individual thing. Uh, and the final one here they're mentioning here is Parfum or Perfume. And they have chosen Terre d'Hermes Pure Perfume. Um, concentration of 15 to 25% perfume oil. I actually think it's, it, it is actually more higher. I can be higher than that. Uh, as I said, these, these percentages are, you know, I'm not sure how accurate they are. And he says it's also known as extra, uh, so like extra de parfum. Uh, this is what all perfumes were like in the 17th century. The pure form is extraordinarily powerful, absolutely not for the faint of nose. Uh, attempt more than two dabs of this and you'll be reeking of it for days. Uh, such concentrations are aimed at the connoisseur rather than the average Joe and are therefore rarely male specific. A little goes a long, long way, so don't expect to find an X-ray in super-sized bottles like an aftershave splash, and be prepared to part with a hefty sum for a tiny bottle. So, you know, fragrances like, you know, um, like Nasamato, X-ray de parfum, fragrances like that. I actually disagree with um, Ted Hermes. I really don't think this is a pure parfum. Um, that's the one they're showing there. I really don't think that um, that this one actually has a um is that strong to be honest it feels like more of an eau de parfum so yeah so there you go guys you know um hopefully i mean maybe this might have enlightened you a little bit helped you out with a or just give you a bit more detail maybe you already knew about this anyway um and hopefully um you know if you've tried the Versace oud noir fragrance let me know what you think of it and um what do you think about the concept of uh, the, or the idea of Versace making an oud fragrance are they jumping on the bandwagon are they just um following trends or is this actually a fragrance that is worthwhile? And hopefully um, the Citrus Fresh article will 
maybe would have given you some ideas of what to wear this uh, spring and going into the summer. So thanks for watching guys and I will see you soon.